Hi, Jamie Davis, the pod medic here for Innovations in Patient Care. And I'm here in the physio control booth at EMS World Expo 2013 in Las Vegas. And I got a chance to finally talk with one of the people I've been wanting to chat with with physio for a long time. And that's Mitch Smith, Director of Product Development or Product Management for Physio Control. And uh, Mitch, welcome to Innovations in Patient Care. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. So, Mitch, tell us a little bit about what it is you do. What is it that uh, the Director of Product Management does at Physio Control? Well, I lead a team of about a dozen product managers, and what their job is to make sure that we are making the right products for you today and a year from now and 10 years from now. So what that involves is a lot of listening, a lot of talking to our customers, a lot of talking to people who are thinking on the edge, and really understanding what the problems are and helping to translate that very ambiguous kind of feedback into really actionable things for the company to work on. Okay, so let's uh, talk a little bit about that because you do a lot of work with focus groups, talking to uh, individual customers, getting feedback from your sales staff. Uh, how does that all operate into uh, an end product? Well, the first thing to understand about physio control is that you know it's in our DNA for a lot of customer feedback to work its way into, into our system. The, one of the great advantages is that we do have the largest installed base, so that gives us so many points of, of connection with our customers. And the company is wired in a way that feedback from our service guys, from our sales reps, from you know, the people who answer your, your phone calls, these all get back into our development process. So we do a lot of focus groups, we do a lot of interviews, we do a lot of ride-alongs with customers, but we have a lot of point, points of feedback that really get into our system. And and it shows up in the, the type of people we hire, They're, whether you're talking about our quality engineers or our software engineers, our clinicians on staff, all of these people have a common trait of being very passionate and very curious about the customer. So it's not just the marketing group, not my product management group that brings in the input, it's really the entire company and we help to organize it and to help prioritize it and clarify it for the company. So let's let's take a product like let's say the LifePack 15, a very popular EMS product, uh, the, the defibrillator and monitor that I use in my my service. Uh, it, how does that product when go from the previous design? version to, all right, now we're going to come up with something new. Can you walk us through the steps that you went through to get there? Sure. Well, it starts off with um, a lot of questioning, a lot of listening, a lot of listening with, we call it uh, listening with humility and not walking out there thinking you know the answer to what the customer needs. It starts off with some questions that may seem kind of strange, such as, you know, tell us about, you know, the most frustrating thing that happened on your last shift. What keeps you up at night? Uh, what is the most tight, what kind of patients give you the most anxiety? And so it's not specific question of, do you like this button? Do you need this to be shaped like this or that? Or what color do you like on your monitor defibrillators? It really gets into understanding the uh, the life that the, the paramedic leads. Uh, we refer to it as swimming in the fishbowl, swimming in your environment and understanding, understanding that firsthand. So it starts off with understanding really pain points and the story of, of your world, getting down to those needs that you may tell us about or you may just kind of hint at. And we put all that together and we probably will talk to at that first stage, probably about 200 customers around the world. That's just in that first gathering, what are the problems? Needs turns in, turn into ideas. We take those ideas back out and say, which of these ideas grab, which, which of these ideas grab your attention? We pull those ideas together into concepts. Concepts turn into models. Models turn into prototypes. And prototypes get beaten up by our, our test labs. We will make a, probably about 500, um, somewhere between 300 and 500 products that we'll just beat up and at the end stage here to make sure they're they're viable for the market and that takes us about a year at the end of the de end of the design but during every stage of that from the ideas to the concepts to the model we go out every time there and ask for customer feedback we take the, the working prototypes and say pretend that this would work uh, you're you're having a live patient pretend how you would use this show us as realistically as you can how how this would be used so customer involvement happens in a really continuous way. It's got that overall input from the, from the company at large, mm -hmm. but it also has these specific environments. And when you pull an entire product together, such as the 15, uh, a large scale project for us, that turns out to be several hundred types, points of customer feedback, from observations to interviews to, uh, to just discussions with, uh, with thought leaders and, uh, and scientists. And, you know, it's interesting because, I mean, I've been around the block for a while in healthcare and I've used some products out there that were great concepts, mm -hmm. 
that were implemented very poorly. And I think primarily because they just didn't go through the process of asking the end user how they were really going to use it and get some feedback. And it's really impressive to hear the types of things you all do to do that. Well, there, there's really two parts to it. One is, again, that listening without, without pushing. You're not in a selling process when you're listening to customers. You're observing. And th that told us things such as, you know, make the handle wide enough so one person can hand it off to another person. So you have two gloved hands of a firefighter, that means the handle should be that way. And nobody ever asked for that. It's just something you had to observe. And the second part of it is proving that it truly is usable, that it actually does what you're hoping for it to do at the beginning. And that's where we have, we have a department that's dedicated to usability, to clinical effectiveness, and making sure that everything we claim and everything we hoped it would do, we test, we validate it, we prove it. And these are, these are nurses and, and people who are experts in usability who go out and observe and basically say, try this out, see, see if, try to do this task. If it does not work like we anticipated, we go back to the drawing board. So we don't operate off hope, we operate off, off proof that the design works. And it shows, it really does, because it's not just like we talked about the LifePak 15, but it shows in all of your products, especially newer products like the True CPR. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so on True CPR, you know, on that, that project alone, you know, there were several points of customer feedback from that concept through the, uh, through the models in the prototype stage. But that one had an additional layer onto it because we had to develop a raw new technology from the start to do that. And so that extends our development process, our development timeline, to really come up with these novel new technologies such as uh, uh, triaxial field induction that really are new to the world. And to put it in such a way that it can be productized that it does have that degree of usability. So what do you say to that end user that's watching this or listening to this episode and they're, um, they're frustrated with something? Is Physio going to listen? I mean, obviously you are going to listen to what they have to say, but how important is it for them to get that in input back in for the next iteration of the product? It's vital. It's, it's absolutely essential. And you know, iterations of the product are something we're always working on. You may not see all the iterations we do. Some are very internal just to make the, uh, just to make the, the product last longer for you or for us. And we're continually improving the products. We're always working on, on changes. So there's plenty of points of feedback you can, you can get to. Talk to your sales rep or service rep. They, they take that feedback. They have to call it in if it's a complaint and make sure that it's part of our system. And complaints, we, we have a broad definition of complaint. Anything you're remotely dissatisfied about, that's a complaint. And it turns into our development process. That's hardwired into our, into our way of life. But talk to, talk to one of our, our product managers. Call us. Um, you, can, you can find us on our, our website. Or if I can get my email in your show notes, just give us a connection. We like to have direct conversations with our customers and have as much information as possible. Well, Mitch, thanks for being on the show here and joining me here on Innovations in Patient Care and sharing a little bit about how Physio is leading the way with innovation. I appreciate it. Thank you for the time. And I want to thank all of you for checking out this episode of Innovations in Patient Care here from EMS World Expo 2013, coming to you from the Physio Control booth. And we want to thank Physio for their continued support of our programs here at the ProMed Network.